Hello everyone, welcome to my online marine pro seismic data processing course. So today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the very important topic known as spectral analysis. So in this presentation I'm going to talk about periodic waveform versus transient waveform. I'm going to talk about 1D Fourier transform in time and uh, some of uh, the detailed properties of Fourier transform and I will talk about wavelet types. So basically period, periodic waveforms are those which repeats at a fixed period t as you can see on this waveform. Uh, this waveform is repeating uh, with a fixed period t. So basically periodic waveforms can be decomposed into a series of sine or cosine waves whose frequencies are integer multiples of the basic repetition frequency 1 over t which is also known as the fundamental frequency and the higher components which are integer multiples of uh, the fundamental frequency and are given as n over t where n equals 1, 2, and 3 are known as harmonics. So, yeah, so harmonics are basically uh, the decomposed uh, higher frequency component of the sine or cosine waveform. And uh, another thing is uh, uh, you need the frequency as well as the amplitude and phase for uh, to represent any waveform into its sine or cosine wave components. So here we have two examples. So on the left we see uh, a time domain representation of the waveforms and on the right we see the frequency domain representation of the waveform. So here we have on the left in figure A we have two waveforms uh, frequency f and frequency 2f. They are is both zero phase and uh, this is the resultant waveform when we add these two together so and if we decompose this into its amplitude and phase so this is the amplitude representation of the first wave waveform frequency f and the second shows 2f and this is the phase, so they both are zero phase. So this representation of the waveforms is also known as line spectrum because you have just single frequency. And on the right you have uh, two waveforms, uh, frequency f and 2f. And uh, the amplitudes are different this time and they are out of phase by 90 degrees. So when we add them together, you, you get this resultant waveform. And the frequency representation is, you can see that the uh, frequency f has got amplitude 1 and frequency 2f have got double the amplitude. And uh, the first waveform has got zero, zero phase and the second waveform is 90 degree out of phase. So uh, this is the frequency representation of figure B. Okay, so transient waveforms are those which basically don't repeat themselves and they are supposed to have an infinitely long period. So infinitely long period means that they have uh, infinitesimally small fundamental frequency which is 1 over t. If t is infinite so this will tend to 0. So which means that the, the harmonics uh, will now occur at a very small uh, uh, frequency intervals and they will give a continuous amplitude and phase spectra rather than the line spectra as we have seen in the previous example. So it is, uh, it is nearly impossible to cope uh, with a, a continuous uh, spectrum so the only way is to digitize your waveform and uh, uh, to deal with uh, the continuous spectra of transient waveforms. So that's how we <clears throat> excuse me, that's how we do uh, deal with uh, the seismic data by digitization. 
okay so this is uh, uh, the amplitude spectra of a transient waveform and the phase spectra so basically we subdivide into a number of thin frequency slices with each frequency equals to the mean frequency of the slice and an amplitude and phase uh, of the slice is proportional proportional to the area of the, the spectrum okay so basically this is the digital representation of the com continuous amplitude and phase spectra associated with the transient waveform so now another point I want to make here is that uh, uh, if you increase your sampling interval, for example, if your data is, uh, if you sample your data at 4 millisecond and then if you sample at 2 millisecond, so increasing your sampling frequency, sampling interval, you will improve your uh, reconstruction of the waveform and also you will improve the frequency representation of your waveform. So higher is uh, the sampling interval, higher is uh, the number of frequency slices in the frequency domain and improves that and that improves the accuracy of uh, uh, your your waveform okay so Fourier transform is basically uh, a way to to represent your your time uh, signal into into a fr into frequency domain so here we see that uh, uh, a function g of t can be represented in frequency domain as g of f and is given as a of f exponential i phi f where a f is the amplitude spectrum and phi is the phase spectrum so this is a very simple representation of your uh, uh, data in frequency domain I don't want to go in uh, in the mathematics in integration and uh, all those uh, uh, complicated things so it's just the very basic representation of your of your signal in frequency domain so basically g of t and g of f they are known as Fourier pair and they are interchangeable you can go from time domain to frequency domain and and transform your data from frequency domain to the time domain so they are interchangeable so basically uh, to deal with the Fourier transform uh, uh, digitized waveforms uh, we use the fast Fourier transform algorithm based on Cooley Tukey method and uh, it's much much faster to, to do in this way and uh, basically fast Fourier transform is an is a very efficient algorithm for performing a discrete Fourier transform so most of uh, the computers they they use fast Fourier transform to deal with the, the Fourier transform. Uh, another thing is uh, the Fourier transform can be extended in two dimensions, in time and in space. This has been already covered in uh, in the previous uh, uh, lecture. If you want to uh, to to access, you can go into my channel and uh, uh, look into the detail detail lecture on on two D Fourier transform. Okay, so there are some properties of Fourier transform. Uh, one of the most important properties is linearity. So basically, if you scale uh, a function in time, it is scaled in in uh, in frequency domain as well. For example, here you can see that h of t is a function in time, and h of f, capital H f, is its uh, representation in frequency domain. So H from the previous uh, slide, you can write H of F equals A1F exponential I phi 1F where A1F is its amplitude spectrum and phi 1F its phase spectrum. So if you, if you mul according to this property, if you scale in time, it gets scaled in frequency. So if you write A of A capital HF equals A A1F exponential i phi 1f so here your amplitude spectrum is scaled by a constant a but the phase spectrum remains unchanged this can also be extended in terms of if you have two functions uh, a h h t and b g t then they will be scaled 
in frequency domain like this. So this is the linearity property. Reciprocity. So reciprocity, reciprocity is uh, a property uh, like uh, uh, so something is narrow in time domain uh, you will get a broader spectrum in frequency domain so these are all zero phase uh, uh, time series zero phase time signal so if you have a, a spike you will have a constant uh, uh, frequency spectrum if you have a if you have a broader uh, broader amplitude uh, a time signal you will have a spike in in frequency domains so this is also known as uh, a DC bias waveform and if you have a sine uh, waveform uh, broader sine waveform you will have a narrower amplitude spectrum and if you have a narrower uh, sine waveform you will have you will have a broader uh, broader amplitude spectrum so this is the property of reciprocity convolution so convolution in time domain is basically multiplication in frequency domain and the other way around as well it's true so if ht and gt are two functions so h capital hf and gf are their fourier representation and you can write it down like that from the previous example so when you convolve the two time series small ht convolve with gt it will be a multiplication in in frequency domain so if you uh, write this formula here it will be a1f and like that so basically when you convolve in time domain you multiply the amplitude spectrum and you add the phase spectrum so this is a very important property we will study in detail about convolution in my next uh, lecture another property is the time shift so if we if we apply some constant time shift in your uh, time signal it introduces a linear phase shift uh, according to this formula so here you can see that uh, this is a zero phase signal here zero phase waveform so when you you see a zero phase here for all frequencies so if you apply uh, let's say a, a four millisecond time shift it introduces uh, a linear phase shift with uh, introduces phase shift which is linear for all the frequencies so according to this formula with the uh, higher frequency you will get higher phase shift so if you go further from b to, to e the more is the time shift the higher is uh, the phase shift so yeah so by applying a time shift in your signal you are basically introducing a linear phase shift with frequencies next is the phase shift property so if you apply a constant phase shift so this is a zero zero phase uh, waveform as you can see here so when you apply a constant phase shift for all frequencies you are basically changing the shape of uh, the waveform and if you apply further higher phase shift you basically change the shape from here to here from here to here so basically by applying a constant phase shift you can change the shape of your wavelet but the amplitude spectrum remains unchanged okay so that was all about Fourier transform and its properties uh, another important thing is uh, there are different types of wavelets so there are minimum phase maximum phase mixed phase and zero phase wavelet so all these wavelets shown here have got the same amplitude spectrum but they have got a different different uh, phase spectrum so basically a minimum phase wavelet has got the energy loaded in the front 
the mixed phase the maximum phase has got the energy loaded at the back and I think there there is this uh, miss uh, type here and the mixed phase has got the energy loaded in the middle and the zero phase wavelet have got symmetric uh, at time t0 so that's about their uh, property of energy the next property is uh, causality so you can see that there is some uh, energy before time t0 so that's why it's known as non-causal and it's not r realizable in uh, in reality the application in terms of application uh, the air gun the most of the impulsive sources like the one air gun has got minimum phase and uh, we used to have uh, we used to have one second sorry so we used to have uh, water gun sources where we used to have a maximum phase uh, signature which is represented like that and uh, normally when you convolve uh, uh, a filter with the, with the data or some kind of filtering which is so by convolving the two two signals two filters uh, you can get a mixed phase and uh, during the designature process you normally uh, zero phase the data and you get a zero phase wavelet uh, so this is very useful in uh, processing and interpretation to keep uh, your data zero phase because all the other processes you apply uh, after zero phasing your data needs to be zero phased so that you don't alter uh, the phase of the data so on the right this is the phase spectra so you can see that uh, the maximum phase uh, is shown like that so these are all uh, shown as wrapped but you can display them as unwrapped so this is for the maximum phase that's for the mixed phase and green is the zero phase and and the red is minimum phase so these are different types of wavelets uh, very useful in processing okay i think that's all what i wanted to cover uh, most of the stuff is taken from these two books so if you want to to go in detail you can uh, you can look uh, at these books for reference yeah so thank you very much for your interest uh, on this lecture i hope you you learned something from this lecture and uh, and uh, hope to see you soon thank you take care bye bye